How's it going everybody? Noah with Madison Angling. Welcome back to another episode of Shop Talk. We are not at the shop today because we got a ton of snow dumped on us overnight and I don't really feel like driving to the north side of Madison today. So instead we are doing it back here on the porch, kind of where the series started. And we are going to be talking about my top producing muskie baits from the 2022 muskie season. Uh, if you guys have been a part of my channel for a while now, you might have noticed I didn't post a ton of muskie stuff this year or this past year. Um, mostly because it was a little bit tough. Uh, we had to get out of our comfort zone a little bit, throw some different stuff in some different places, and it was a little grindy, so I played the musky stuff a little closer uh, to my vest this year. But that being said, I want to share with you guys the baits that worked really well and some baits that I'm really excited about coming up this coming season. And I did one of these a couple years ago. The questions and comments were awesome. So I appreciate it to everybody who watched that video, commented on that video. And uh, feel free to share your favorite baits from this last season or baits that you're excited about throwing this coming season. Maybe something new or something you played with last year a little bit and are excited to play with this year. Share them down in the comments below, guys. So we are going to just jump right in, start showing you guys some of these baits that we got chewed a whole bunch this last season. Alrighty, so if you guys have watched any of my musky videos for any amount of time, you know that I really like to throw top water almost to a fault, right? It's like the coolest way to catch fish, in my opinion, and I throw top water way more than I probably should. Top water was a little different for me this year here in southern Wisconsin, particularly the Madison chain, and we had to play around with a few different baits, and one of them that really stood out this year was this hopefully it's focusing for you guys this is the chaos tackle little sister so if you guys like tail baits um this is a great option they're wood um you know some cool paint jobs and they have more of a um kind of a slappy pop than a a, a really poppy pop if that makes sense all tail baits sound different which is cool and it's cool that we have so many options nowadays but this bait actually was pretty darn good this year um you know, traditionally didn't really throw, I throw lots of Medusas, Poseidons, Esox Assault Bucktails, but never really threw a lot of the Chaos Topwaters. And this bait was actually pretty darn consistent this year. Uh, maybe just because it's a little different, especially fishing on pressured water like I do here on the Madison Chain and a lot of the southern Wisconsin lakes. Um, maybe it was just something a little different with the sound, maybe something a little different with the profile, who knows. But a really just simple topwater bait, a simple tail bait, and uh and i'm a sucker for wood baits and you'll notice that as we go through these but check these out guys and i'm gonna have all these baits linked in the description below but the little sister was an awesome awesome bait for me this year and keeping on with the top water thing um this is actually a new bait that just was released uh here at the chicago musky expo uh, about a week ago and uh that is the lee lures heart attack and this is actually one of the uh prototypes so it's not the final version that uh is available for purchase uh, but if you guys like flap tails and you guys if you watch my videos, you know, I really like flap tails if you like flap tails and if you like jitterbugs This is an awesome combination of the two and uh, Lee came up with this when he was um, Basically when he was having his heart attack here about a year ago And uh, this was the first thing to come to fruition from uh, his uh, stay at the hospital But pretty cool. It's got a fun kind of fish shaped kind of shad shaped body um, it's got the big jitterbug lip on it, so it does kind of the walky, poppy thing. And we incorporated the flap tail um, components on the back, too. So you've got kind of the best of both worlds. And what I really like about this bait, especially fishing here in southern Wisconsin where it's super weedy, is uh, so traditional flap tails, right? Basically, ignore the front half of this bait. You've got, um, you know, your swivel with your flap tail blade on the back, right? What often happens is you get some weeds on your bait and it clogs up your swivel and the bait stops working. If this blade stops, your flap tail is basically dead in the water. It's not fishing anymore. What was really cool about this thing is even if that tail blade gets fouled with weeds, this front jitterbug lip moves enough water that no matter what, this bait keeps running. Even if it's not clink, 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 it's still walking and blooping, making all kinds of noise. So basically it turns into a creeper. Um, which is great because you're not losing opportunities on fish, right? How many times have you had your bait get clogged up or your the blade on your bucktail stops spinning and the fish just aborts at the last second, right? Because your bait stops running because of the weeds. This one I hadn't had any issues with, which was really cool. So I did get a chance to fish it uh, a fair amount last year, caught some fish on it, moved a lot of fish on it, um, and really enjoyed it a lot. And I didn't have uh, 
didn't have this real early in the season, so I didn't get to fish it the entire year, but this is one that I did really well on this last year, and I'm very excited to be fishing going into the 2023 season. Alrighty, well, that's about all I have for topwater. We caught fish on other baits too. We caught fish on choppers. We did catch fish on flap tails, but those were the two that really stuck out to me. The little sister from Chaos Tackle and the heart attack from Lee Lures. So let's jump into some subsurface stuff here. And obviously we have to talk about bucktails. Everybody catches fish on bucktails. And this is one that's actually been a very consistent producer for the last few years for me, but especially this last season. That is the Musky Frenzy 8-9 Stagger. And uh, generally speaking, um, you know, it, it runs like a lot of other bucktails. It pulls really easy. But what I really like about it, um, frankly, is the One Piece Clevis that's exclusive to Musky Frenzy. And just so you guys know, not a sponsored product. I'm not sponsored by Musky Frenzy. But Nick, in the off chance you're watching this video, I know you already know your baits rock, but they put a lot of fish in my boat. So thanks for making an awesome bucktail. Uh, but what's cool is uh, he uses this One Piece Clevis, which is pretty darn cool. So when one blade starts, they both start, which is awesome. So with a lot of double bladed bucktails, as I'm sure a lot of you know, sometimes you gotta pop it to get it started. These things fire right up, which is awesome. The only modification I make to these is uh, they come with one hook on the back of the bait. I add a uh, second hook right here above the skirt. I had a five aught eagle claw, um, just in case fish come up and hit towards the blades, especially in the dark. Uh, but this was an awesome bait. You can see I got this one kind of in this black and purple, uh, black on black, honestly. Color's the last thing I really worry about. But the 8-9 Musky Frenzy Stagger, this is one that I always have in the boat. Somebody's pretty much always throwing this thing. Another one that worked incredibly well this year, and it frankly has been a really good bait for as long as I've been throwing it, is uh, the Esox Assault Single 9, uh, black on black. And this one uh, was actually new at the start of the season last year. You can see just about all the black nickel finish is worn off the blade. The uh, plating is worn off the beads. The skirt is falling apart. This hook's been replaced probably six or seven times in the last season. This thing is just mangled, but I'll tell you what, as far as a compact bucktail that has a lot of thump to it, and it's just a little different, right? The single bladed bucktails versus the double bladed bucktails versus the stagger bladed bucktails. You'll notice here, I throw a lot of single blades and stagger blades because it's different, right? It's not just something off the shelf that you can pick up and, and chuck, right? And, and frankly, it, well, it is, but a lot of people throw double nines, double eights, double tens. The single blades and the stagger blades are different. They do give off a different thump. They have a different profile. They do look different and seem different to the fish. And in my opinion, um, they do get bites on pressured waters more so than the, the traditional stuff. So the Esox Assault Single 9, definitely a staple in my boat, has been for a long time, but this year it worked incredibly well. Keeping with the bucktail theme here, uh, the third one that we did really, really well on this year, and typically I throw late season, like in the fall post turnover, uh, was the number 10 Lee Lures Boilermaker. And typically, uh, you know, we throw a lot of mini Boilermakers, especially early in the year, but even in June this past season, we were catching fish on the number 10 here. Um, and why it was working so well, I don't know. Uh, it's never not worked well, but we did catch a lot of fish on this thing this year. Um, and this, again, the number 10, there's uh, nines, tens, and uh, I wanna say 12, a single 12 available. Um, but just the number 10, this is kind of the OG. This is the one that sort of started the Boilermaker thing. Um, great baits, they run right under the surface, right above the weeds, and you can fish it basically as slow as you can turn the handle. That single number 10 blade is gonna go thump, thump, thump. And we caught a lot of fish on this thing. It's a great customer bait because it's, I mean, it's stupid easy. You cast it out, reel it in, and you can't reel it in too slow. That's the beauty of it. Uh, basically, as long as the handle on the reel is turning, this thing is running. Uh, but we caught a lot of fish on this, especially in the fall, right after turnover. It just, this was like almost 10 to one every other bait we threw. We caught a lot of fish on this thing. So definitely something to keep in the back of your mind. Kind of a niche bait, but there, there's definitely a time and a place for it. And especially here in Southern Wisconsin where we deal with lots of weeds, the Boilermaker rocks. And that's really what this thing was designed to do is to be fished down here, right over the weeds, right under the surface, super slow. So number 10 Boilermaker, you might wanna get one of these if you don't already have one. Alrighty, the last two baits. So we're sticking with the subsurface stuff here. And I'm sure this is true for a lot of people watching this video, but the good old Chaos Tackle Medusa. Um, caught lots and lots of fish on Medusas this year. We catch lots of fish on them every year, but this was another staple that just continues to produce fish. 
Uh, this one is the regular sized shallow. You can tell it's a shallow because it has a hole in the fin here. That basically means it's going to run higher in the water column. You can get these to run deeper. You can add the deep threat uh, weights to these and um, get these down deeper. But fishing in Madison here, um, you know, I throw a lot of stuff over the top of the weed. So I like these shallow, regular medusas. Uh, this one happens to be in the TA walleye from last year. Uh, the new TA walleye is super cool, so be sure to check those out at the shows. And I actually have a show color this year. I don't have one with me. I'm probably not going to load up until after the show season here, but Purple Theory. It's kind of like a uh, sexy shad with some perch bars on it. Super cool bait, so be sure to check those out if you guys are at the musky shows this winter. But uh, the good old regular Chaos Tackle Medusa awesome bait it's always been a great bait but we caught lots and lots of fish on those this year especially fish that were out deeper we found a lot of fish in open water this last year not so much structure oriented but more so just pelagic right so the medusas were a great tool for picking those fish apart as well as this one and i'm sure you've seen this if you watch today's angler uh you watch angling anarchy you've probably seen this a handful of times now the death pause minnow this happens to be a seven and a half inch death pause minnow uh just in regular perch here white belly perch i uh, been throwing this for a few years now and been catching a lot of fish on it. It's just a good bait. It's a good, truly suspending wood jerk bait. And it's one of those things that just gets better with time. Kind of like an old school unweighted wood suic. The more you fish it, the more hook rash it gets, the better the thing runs. That's kind of how these things are too. So um, the five and a half is a great early season bait. The six and a half and seven and a half are great all around. Whether you want to cast them or troll them, they're great baits, especially here in southern Wisconsin where we have primarily panfish forage-based lakes and uh, all the way up to the 10 and the 13-inch uh, the for all you Minnesota guys. So uh, another great bait, a truly suspending jerk bait. They're all handmade. They're all hand-painted. No, they're not cheap, but you get what you pay for. If you want to throw a $20 shallow raider, go right ahead. They catch fish. But if you want to throw something that's perfectly dialed, check out the Death Paws Minnows. Um, they are at all of the shows this winter. Uh, we were just at the Chicago Muskie Expo here last week. We are planning on going to the Milwaukee Muskie Expo, Wausau, and uh, the Minnesota show. So be sure to check in. Watch the Today's Angler page. Uh, Lee's been announcing uh, where all the shows we're going to be at um, are going to be. So uh, keep an eye on those, but we are making sure we've got plenty of Death Paws minnows for everybody, um, as well as a bunch of other good stuff. So that is pretty much it guys that was kind of my uh my my go-to lineup this year we had these baits on deck the entire time pretty much all season so run through them again real quick here chaos tackle little sister awesome tail bait the lee lures heart attack part creeper part flap tail awesome bait we've got the chaos tackle regular medusa the today's angler walleye was a super hot color this year the Lee Lures Death Paws Minnow, this is the seven and a half, but the six and a half and five and a half were awesome as well. The Musky Frenzy, eight, nine, stagger. You gotta have these guys. If you fish Madison especially, gotta have some of those. The Esox Assault, single nine, and last but certainly not least, especially not this last year, the Lee Lures number 10 Boiler Maker. So with that guys, Hopefully you guys had a fun and fruitful musky season this last year. And hopefully this coming season is good too, obviously. Who knows? Musky fishing has been a little weird on the Madison chain the last couple years. So we might be branching out, fishing some other places this year, which I'm super excited about. But I want to know what you guys think. What were some of your favorite baits from this last season? Or what are some baits that you're really excited about throwing this season? Share them down below. Or love, you know, we're, we're always learning, right? I, I And I love that about musky fishing. And I love it so much that I'm getting tongue-tied about it. But that's what's fun, right? It's like hunting, and it's something that you never truly master, right? Which is fun. That's why it's so much fun, right? So share with each other, right? That's why I, I make these videos. I want to share this stuff with everybody. So hopefully it helps people catch more fish, right? So share that stuff down below. Or maybe some questions and comments about these baits, right? Things, maybe some modifications you can do, uh, things that you've done to make the bait run better for you and your situation. Share that stuff down below, guys. I would love to hear it. So with that, guys, that is this week's episode of Shop Talk. Again, please comment down below. If you like this video, hit the like button. If I have earned your subscription, I'd love it if you hit the subscribe button. It'll never cost you a thing. So with that, guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next video.